Hey, what's going on everybody? We are doing a different video today. Today's video is a series of events that happened throughout the process of the thing that we're gonna get into. It's something different. Normally you and I, you know, we meet at the cemetery, we walk around, we talk about the life of a person or the tragedy or whatever they were, you know, involved in. And I thought as the channel grows, you and I maybe should grow the content with it, right? We should do something different. And so this is the start of that something different. We'll still do the same, you know, other stuff where you and I meet in the grave and do that. But this, this is going to add more, more things for us to do, right? So the B roll that you're going to see is from a town called Mooresville. It's just outside of Huntsville, Alabama. And it is as close as we can get to a representation of Cottonport, which is the town we'll be discussing that these graves were in. Let me get the ad out of the way and say if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is normally not how we do things, but going forward, I hope so. And if you do enjoy the content, like, subscribe, share. It's algorithm stuff, right? That's why I always say this stuff. It's not like, ugh. I just, we got to do it to make the channel grow. It's one of those things. I can't help it. And we, we've got the Liquid IV sponsorship. We've got merchandise. We got the, the membership stuff. We got all that, right? I got to always try to plug that in the beginning. So with all that being said, let's go to Mooresville in the B-roll as I read about Cottonport, which is kind of the same. So let's put our pretend hats on and we'll just pretend that's Cottonport, okay? Cottonport sprung up in 1818, bordering the Tennessee River. Cottonport was a place where farmers in neighboring Athens and other towns could drive their wagons of cotton to offload onto boats for transport to outlying markets. Cottonport had a town square, homes, warehouses for cotton, and other goods to be transported, and even a racetrack. The citizens of Cottonport, which was founded the same year as Limestone County, were fortunate to have the beautiful land along the river to build their town and raise their families. The river that literally fed the town and its economy was also breeding mosquitoes, which in turn carried malaria. And in the 1850s, many people died from an epidemic or were driven farther inland to escape the threat to their families. No records have been found indicating what happened to the buildings and homes or the towns. The late Faye Axford, a well-known Limestone County historian, mentioned a Tucker graveyard at Cottonport in her book, The Lure and Lore of Limestone County. It's a little loud, but let's, uh, this is as close as I wanted to get anyway. Thank God for gravel back roads, right? So it's 1968. They are building Interstate 65. Crews were doing earthwork for the next spur of the interstate right through here. One day, everything had to come to a stop because 12 bodies were found. Somewhere right along in this area was the town of Cottonport. So let's go to the next thing. Historians decided the state had unearthed the long lost cemetery of Cottonport. The state advertised their newfound wards, but no one came forward to claim any of the bodies. Now, the DOT had a dilemma. What do you do with 195 bodies found? So what does a state agency typically do? They put the project up for bids, right? And it just so happens in an older, this is the new version of the funeral home, 50 miles away, the owners of New Hope Funeral Home alerted to the project by a local resident, Denton Adams, who worked on the highway crew, won the bid to move and reinter the bodies for a reported $47,000. They purchased a small parcel of land next to the cemetery, and that's where they reinterred them at. So this is the funeral home that moved them. So let's head on over to the cemetery. So the wooden coffins had deteriorated, leaving only neatly laid out bones. Once the ground was scraped with equipment, highway workers could see dark spots in the earth that indicated where bodies were buried. The Alabama Department of Transportation, which now owned the land, stopped work to try to find where the bodies belonged. What they found was another 183 bodies. So today, all that can be seen, or all that's left from all of these unknown graves, is in this small cemetery 
here in, at Hayden Cemetery. And there's a sign that clearly states the unknown graves brought from Limestone County in 1968. And each one, as you can see all the way down through here, has a granite marker with a number on it. Like that one is 54. And like here's one that's 62 and so forth all the way down through there yeah unknown graves huh how cool right who uh who would have thought they would have found the historic town of cottonport or the cemetery you know i guess cottonport was more on the water and all that stuff right but yeah one of those things at least the state did what the state needed to do which was to dig them up and uh reinter them somewhere else somewhere else um, even though like that one says 87 a and then that one says 87 so there must have been two people that's uh that's different but also there was one that never made it and when i get back i'm gonna uh, look into that and see what i can't find but it was an iron coffin and for the day, those were rare, and so it was the only iron coffin in the Cottonport Cemetery when they found it. And they had put it in that funeral home that we were just at, and it disappeared. So nobody knows where the man in the iron coffin went. So I think that'll be a pretty little... Maybe I can put this, put that at the, uh, the end of the video with what I find. There's not a lot of information on where it could have went and what it was, but I thought that was interesting that... Even though, you know, they found all these and they reinterred them, like one of them went missing because it, I guess it was such a, uh, a novelty of an iron coffin. So, yeah, unknown graves, huh? It, it's weird. Like I said, you know, originally at least the state did that because a lot of times, like I know of in very rural Alabama, like let's say with hunting clubs and stuff, right? If people are going to get timber cut and there is an older family cemetery just out in the middle of the woods, right? The locals know about it. The timber company knows about it, but they're just like, yeah, we got to get that timber cut. So they cut it down and the graves are lost to time. And that's a bummer. Like it sucks. And so at least the state, you know, did right here. It is a heck of a foggy day today too. I don't know if y'all have noticed that. It makes, uh, it's not as foggy as it was. Because it makes being out in a uh, cemetery a little creepy sometimes with the fog. It's lifted a lot, so it's nowhere near as bad as it could have been. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. It really means a lot. I say that in every video. I can't thank you guys enough for watching. All the support, the members, the we've got uh, the Patreon, we've got PayPal, we've got the merchandise. we got all the things, and that kind of stuff is what helps me to uh, go do the things that you and I get to do together. So thanks a lot, and you never know what you're going to find on the back roads. I'll see you guys next time.